Hello and welcome to this week's video. Now, this week I wanted to take a further look at the Sony A6400 coupled with this rather massive Tamron 15600 G2. Uh, looks pretty silly, doesn't it? I know, but trust me, I know where I'm going with this one. Anyway, last week I took some images and used this combination in a hide setting, so very much where everything was under my control and I was really surprised with the performance that this gave me uh, really surprised and happy actually as you'll probably know not, normally I use a Canon 80D with this lens and uh, this lens is coupled to this camera with a Sigma MC11 adapter um, so really after the performance last week and I'll put a link to that video up here um, I really wanted to try and test it a little bit further. Now for me, um, the best way to test it is actually to take it out and do some of the photography that I enjoy doing, which is more stalking wildlife and walk around wildlife where I'm, I'm just walking through the countryside and then having to react to things coming along. And again, not as much as in my control. So that would be, for me, a much better test of this camera system as I've got it. So that's what I'm going to do this week. Um, I think first what I'll do is try some flight shots if I can. I mean, it's, today is an absolutely awful day as regards weather. It's so grey and overcast. I think I'm shooting on this at 1000 ISO already and that's pointing it at the sky so it shows you how dull it is and that's just to get about a five hundredth of a second. Uh, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, now what I would say firstly, what I've done with this setup is what you'll find a lot of photographers say is that it feels unbalanced and it feels odd and that in a, in a way that's right uh, but I'll come to that later but the first thing I always do when I'm going to do some photography like this I like to use the um, the lens foot as a, a carry handle now what I do is I flip this 180 degrees so it sits on top of the camera um, and that helps really not only as a carry handle I mean you can carry it upside down like that but I carry it in that way but what that means is when you bring it up to your eye to actually take an image this isn't in your way and obviously because one of the things that photographers say about this is it feels unbalanced you, you need to be able to move your hand to a comfortable position where you know you're going to be able to feel comfortable and well balanced taking the shot so that's what I tend to do is put that on the top that's the first thing when I'm going to come out and do some wildlife and the other thing I'd say that you need to do is is to make sure especially if this is your one camera you, you lose it you use it for landscapes you lose it for portraits um, you use it for all your photography is when you're going out make sure you set the settings for what you're going to be doing on that day so you know I've done this before I've gone out shoot some wildlife I've had a fox in front of me press the shutter button and it's on two second timer because I've been doing some landscape photography the day before so that's really important just check all your settings that are, they're what you want for when you go out into the field and start shooting anyway I'll catch up with you later um, and we'll see if we can get some flight shots Right, I've got myself in a, a position um, actually on one of the old spoil heaps where they piled up all the topsoil and everything when they quarried these old gravel pits here. And as you'll probably see from this side, I've got the River Trent on this side of me. And then to the opposite side, there's quite a few gravel pits full of water. Um, now what that gives me is that this elevated position. A lot of the birds, what they tend to do is migrate across from the river to the gravel pits and back. Um, so it gives me a, a slightly higher position so that when they come through I'm shooting more on a level with them rather than shooting you know up into the sky now the first thing I noticed yesterday when I was out with this camera um, and this setup was that when you're walking along and 
you've got your camera settings as you think you want them. One of the major things is if you get a bird in flight, for instance, you're often, your bird is quite dark and you've got a bright sky. Now, normally I will walk along with my exposure compensation at zero. And what I was finding was that to change the exposure compensation, because what you need to do if you're suddenly gonna be um, taking pictures of birds in flight with a, a really bright sky and quite a dark bird, is you want to overexpose the sky if you like so that the detail on the birds retained and, and you're not what you if you leave it at zero what you tend to get is a completely black blob of a bird with no detail and then the sky is, is just a muddy grey now it's muddy grey anyway today um, but what I would want to do if I get a, a bird coming across the sky is I want to take the exposure compensation up to at least probably plus one just so that that brings out the detail in the bird. I'm not particularly bothered about the sky. Um, it'll just be a lighter shade of grey on a day like today anyway. But what I was finding is uh, you have a button on, on this camera called FN and if you click on that you can then get um, access to like a quick menu of, of the things that you may want to use and one of those is exposure compensation and then you have to click on that and then physically move it with a wheel. Now that for me was just taking too long so what I did and what you've got to realize with these newer cameras is you can customize all the buttons to do anything that you particularly want um, to suit your needs if you like so what I've done is when I'm shooting in aperture priority which is what I tend to shoot with for wildlife is that the little wheel at the back here that is now exposure compensation so I changed my aperture with this wheel at the top and that's exposure compensation so there's no need to go into any menus I can just quickly oh bird in flight plus one bang 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 um, and it's just taken that extra step out so once I started doing that working a lot better now the other thing I'd say is um, because and I've mentioned this quite a lot before because you you've got here a, a third-party lens a different third-party converter and then the Sony a6400 what you would imagine is that the autofocus slows up an awful lot. Now I would say, yeah, it probably does slow up. You know, if you'd got a, a Sony lens, a, a, a Sony 400mm lens, 100-400 or whatever, on this Sony body, it would be lightning fast, and it, so it should be, because there's no... It's a native connection to a native camera, and it should just be perfect, because that's what it was made for. Now obviously I think you're going to get a little bit of lag with this, now having said that, this Sony A6400 has got lightning fast autofocus anyway and it also has things like um, eye autofocus so if you're taking pictures of people it will lock onto their eye um, I think you can choose either left or right eye and you can just track them if they're coming towards you and it will stick to their eye and obviously as a wildlife photographer you want eyes in focus They've also, I think, upgraded the firmware in this now and you've got animal eye focus so it will focus on an animal eye. So say you've got deer walking towards you, you know, you can auto-focus it onto that eye of that animal and it'll just stick with it. So you've got those advantages. Um, the other thing I would say is try and be prepared for what you're going to photograph. So, for instance, in this situation here, I know that the birds are going to come through about there. If I'm going to take any images, they're going to be about 15 to 20 metres away. So on this Tamron lens, you have various functions on the side of the lens as regards focusing. You can have it at full focus, which means that the camera will try and focus from 2.2 metres to infinity. You can have it at um, 10 metres to 2.2 metres, which means it'll focus at shorter distances up to 10 metres and as, as close as 2.2 metres. Or you can have it from 10 metres to infinity. Now obviously in this situation I'm, I know where the birds are going to come through. They're going to be further than 10 metres away. So to speed up the autofocus and give me that little bit more advantage, I can just change this to 10 metres to infinity, like so. And now the camera is not hunting over that huge range trying to, trying to focus. Now the other issue that you might get, and a lot of these are common with all sorts of cameras and lens combinations, but um, I found it particularly if you do this then it will again speed up focus and actually allow you to get focus in some instances. Say you've been walking along during the day and you've been taking pictures of smaller birds in a bush 
and they were four meters away. You've then come up here and you're going to do some birds in flight shots. Your camera and lens is focused at say three meters, really close in. Now if you then try, you've switched your lens to 10 meters to infinity, a bird flies through, you lift the camera to your eye and I, I can guarantee nine times out of 10, because you're looking at the bird and you're lifting it to your eye, the bird will be at the end of the lens. It should be there. If you're focused at three meters from your previous settings, it'll just like look like a blank screen and you'll start, well, where is it? Where is it? You can't see it. It's because it's so far out of focus. So what I would say to do and what I've been doing is pre-focus. So I know it's gonna be over 10 meters away. So I will just pick something in the landscape that's a reason, you know, in that area. So between 10 and 15 meters away and I'll focus on it beforehand. So, you know, I'll focus on the bank down there and then I'll leave it. And then when a bird comes through, lift it to my eye and although it might not be bang on in focus it'll be enough in focus for the camera to lock onto it nine times out of ten and then bang 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 you can take your shot if you don't do that the likelihood is you'll miss the shot because you'll lift it up to your eye and you can't see a bird at all so as i say that's not just um, something that you need to be aware of with this lens but what i would say is the things that i'm telling you here will make up for those differences in uh, focusing speed that you've got because you've not got a native lens with a native body. I'm going to be a little bit personal now and I'm just going to ask anybody out there if they suffer with a magnum nasum or a elongated proboscis. Um, I do, I'm not challenged in that area and anybody who doesn't know uh, that's your nose. Now the problem with this camera is, is that it has touch screen. And what I noted when I, when I first took it out was that when I was lifting this to my face to take a picture, my nose is resting on the screen. And with this touch screen on, I was finding that even though I was looking through the viewfinder, my nose was moving the focus point on the screen, which obviously you're trying to follow a bird and then the focus point is moving off to the right somewhere. And uh, yeah, it, it was because of this. Now, I think you're gonna have to have a fairly small nose for that not to be a problem. So again, what I've done is because of that, this FN menu, what you can do is customize it for everything that you use a lot. And what I've put in there is basically to turn the touch screen on and off. So when I'm doing wildlife, I just turn the touch screen off because I don't particularly use it anyway. Um, I use it more for landscapes, but it's there and I, I, can, I can basically click in and out of it as often as I want and one of the other things that I put in there as well is the um, silent shutter mode now again for bird photography I don't tend to use it but if I'm doing mammals then it is completely silent that shutter and it's a real bonus to be able to shoot and not have any noise I think I'm gonna end the video here today. Um, to be fair, I think the conditions I've got today, um, any camera system is gonna struggle. It's one of those real November days in, that we get in England where it never seems to get light. Uh, when I was looking at the weather, it seemed that we were gonna have a breakthrough of sun from about 12 till two this afternoon. It's just gone two o'clock now and it's already getting dark. So um, the light levels have just never really increased. I'm actually down, um, if I can just swing you around, on the edge of the gravel pit now. And um, I have to say, if you're gonna investigate areas this like this, just please be careful because these are incredibly deep. Um, I've been 
coming around here for probably 20 years now so I know them really well know where I can and can't get to um, the water levels are really low at the minute so I don't know whether they've been sort of draining some of the water out but um, yeah where I am here at the minute I've, I've never really investigated this place a lot on this on this sort of part of the um, this particular gravel pit so looking at it now it looks like an ideal place to um, set up a hide I'll put up an image in a minute that I took here yesterday and the autumn colours um, made this image really so I'll stick that image up in a second so you can have a look at it and this again was with this camera set up so if nothing else I've already taken an image that I'm really really happy with um, in just a couple of days so that's not a bad hit rate to be fair. Right, how would I sum up this lens and camera combination? Well, I've been using it for two days and that's not really enough to do a full evaluation. You know, six months maybe I'd be able to tell you exactly what I thought. What I can tell you is that in that two days I've seen a massive improvement in the images that I'm taking and that is purely down to spending time with the system and making changes as I've noted things that aren't working how I want them to work and I think that's the big thing really if I'd gone into a camera shop and said I want to try this out and I tried it out for an hour I'd have probably come away and gone mm, not for me I'm sticking with a DSLR but I think what you need to do is spend time with any new camera system actually I think when you get comfortable with a system it's really difficult to pull yourself away from it into something new because you are going to see a dip in your performance because as I say, when I first used this yesterday, it really wasn't working very well, but it was down to me not changing things so that it could work to its full potential. And as soon as you do that, and as an example, simple things like the exposure compensation that I had, where I was trying to move from shooting stuff on the land to birds in flight, and what I would normally do is change the exposure compensation to plus one or plus two so it blows out the sky and that dark bird is then I can see all the feather detail etc I, I, I was having to go into a menu to do that now all these buttons on this camera are customizable to how you want it so once you know that you can then customize a button that does that for you when you want it to where you want it to what's comfortable for you and all of a sudden that problem's not a problem and it's been solved and it's all of a sudden you're raising the level of what you can do with that piece of kit. I've done that two or three times in the last two days to change things but I'm nowhere near getting it to perform at its best and I know that now and I think as the months go on I'll continue to make little tweaks and by a month, two months into using this I'm pretty sure that I will hopefully be able to produce stunning image on a fairly regular basis so it's really down to how much work you put into learning that system and uh, I think if you were to get this system you wouldn't be disappointed anyway that's it for this video if you've got any comments if you've got any questions that you think I haven't covered please stick them in the comments below um, please give this video a like and if you haven't subscribed to the, the channel yet then please consider subscribing and I will see you next week for another video. Cheers, bye.